Hey, Winston, what are you working on? Oh, you know, just doing my dutiful job as a research assistant and reading up about our next job, the magical world of marine biologists and all the wonderful things they do. Actually, <laughs> I meant to tell you, I invited one to come over and meet us today so we could learn more about the job. Invited who? A marine biologist. Wait, you did? Really? I'm impressed. Yep. <laughs> a quick break from the news to tell you about Asher DeVos, a need-to-know marine biologist who's an expert in blue whale research. In 2018, DeVos became world famous when she won the award for the BBC's Most Inspiring Woman, bringing Sri Lanka to the world stage, shining a light on her country and her people. Oh, uh, let me get the door. That must be Asha now. Wait, that was fast. Hi there, I'm Emily, and you are... Hi, my name is Asha DeVos. Pretty cool name, huh, Emily? Uh, how do you spell it? Uh, you spell that A-S-H-A. My last name is D-E space V-O-S. I'm a marine biologist in the beautiful tropical island of Sri Lanka, uh, where I have a freezer full of whale poop. Wait a second. Did you really just say whale poop? <laughs> yes, she did. Because it helps to fertilize the plants in the ocean. And that's super important because those plants then release oxygen that we can breathe. Well, whale, who knew? Marine biologists, that too. <laughs> Asha, the world of marine biology is so vast and exciting. Did you want to work with ocean life since you were little? I was six years old and I wanted to be an adventurous scientist. I wanted to go where no one else would ever go and see what no one else would ever see. And as I grew up, I fell in love with water. I became a swimmer. I would immerse myself in water whenever I could. And so by the time I was ready to go to university, I decided the one job that would combine my love for adventure, science and salt water was marine biology. Coming from a country that didn't really know what a marine biologist was, it's a miracle that I ever discovered it as a career. You might all be wondering, well, how did you find out about it? And that would be a good question. It actually was from National Geographic magazines. As a kid, my parents would go to these secondhand bookshops and pick up a few magazines here and there, just bring it home. And I would flip through the pages and look at all these incredible people with their scuba gear on, diving with beautiful colored fish, or standing on boats and looking out into the distance as whales lifted their tail flukes up before a dive or exhaled into the mist. And I would think, wow, like that looks amazing. Wow. You know, I wonder if all the stuff we see and read as kids can be little clues to what we might love doing when we grow up. Asha saw people exploring the ocean and it sparked something inside her. I was very lucky because there was a, a very famous science fiction writer called Sir Arthur C. Clarke who moved from the UK to live in my country to dive the beautiful shipwrecks around my island. And I would get to meet him at my swimming club and he would tell me stories of the ocean. And so because of that, he also opened my mind to the fact that there were these mystical, magical animals in this big watery space that a lot of people just saw as an empty blue tank of water. Wow, Sir Arthur C. Clarke. Oh, I can't believe you got to spend so much time with him, Asha. He is truly an amazing author. He is? Oh my gosh, yes. He mainly writes sci-fi, like Asha said, and his most famous book ever was 2001, A Space Odyssey. But after he moved to Sri Lanka in 1956, he got super interested in undersea exploration and diving. And that same year, he produced a picture book called The Coast of Coral. Whoa, so he was an underwater photographer too? Yep, I think he loved everything about the ocean, just like Asha. You know, all this talk about the ocean's making me really want to go to the beach to check out stuff firsthand. <gasps> Should we? Yeah, you know what? No better way to learn about marine biology than to get our feet wet. I'll snap us there right now. Winston, you ready? Yep, I got my goggles, my flippers, and some sunscreen. So let's go. Before we get there, I want to take a quick minute to tell you and our listeners about Lingo Kids. You know how I start every episode by saying that it's a Lingo Kids podcast? Well, Lingo Kids is the number one learning app for kids. They believe that learning can be fun, and I think so too. They transform screen time with educational and interactive games, videos, and songs. And you can play all these on their app. What do you think, Winston? What do I think? <laughs> Sign me up! Pretty cool, right? Oh, we're here. 
Ah, I just love the beach. Hey, where are we, Emily? We're just off the coast of New England. It's nice here, isn't it? Yeah. The water feels so cool and refreshing. Be careful. That's a tide pool. A tide pool? What's that? You're in it. Some interesting animals live in here. Like, oh, oh, that big lobster coming right toward us. Uh Uh-oh, that's way bigger than I thought it was. Uh, hey, little guy, don't worry. I am a vegetarian. Wow, sea animals are so colorful. That starfish is bright orange. Ew, I stepped on something slimy. (laughs) Well, slimy isn't too bad, but you definitely want to avoid stepping on a spiky sea urchin. Oh, right. And there's all sorts of creepy crawlies that live in the ocean. Yes, but beautiful animals too, and a lot of them. And some are so tiny that you can only see them under a microscope, like plankton. But some are massive, like the blue whale. Whoa, hey, aren't blue whales like the largest animals to ever, ever live on the planet? Very good, Winston. In fact, many blue whales are so big that their tongues weigh more than an elephant. How crazy is that? Ooh, I bet they could eat a lot of ice cream with tongues that big. (laughs) Enough for a tummy ache, that's for sure. We know this thanks to researchers and marine biologists. Very awesome. Hey, Asha, do marine biologists get to go to the beach and swim like this every single day? I mean, is it part of your job? A large part of my work is to get out on the ocean, in, on, or around the ocean, to understand the ocean and all the creatures that live within it. But some other part of my work involves sitting at my desk and collecting all that information I gathered when I went on those snorkels or those dives or when I was on the boat. What species am I seeing? What are their behaviors? What are they eating? How long can they hold their breath? So then I come back and bring all that information and sit at my computer and start typing it all in and trying to figure out what is the story of these elusive inhabitants of our deep oceans. So marine biologists aren't always at the beach and swimming with the animals. Sometimes they work in offices too. That's right. Many marine biologists gather valuable information and living specimens that they can bring back to labs or aquariums to study so that we can learn more about life in the sea. Living specimens? What's that? A living specimen is a small part of nature, like a tiny creature or plant that's full of life and has its own special story. Crews of marine biologists sometimes work together to study them. So one marine biologist might know more about something like crabs, while another one might know more about whales, like Asha. And they can help each other with solving problems since they all know about different parts of the ocean. That's a great way to look at it, Winston. And you're right. The ocean is so, so huge, and tens of thousands of plants and animals live in it. Many things live in the sea, too many for any marine biologist to know all of them. Plus, the ocean's always moving. Because of that, some scientists follow animals for weeks or even months to see how they behave. So a lot of the animals are always on the move? Hmm, why is that? In the winter, sea turtles lay their eggs in the warm waters of the Caribbean. But in the summer, they travel up north to places like Canada where it's cooler to find food. Oh, Canada, eh? Can't they find a meal closer? Well, I guess that's where the best food is that time of year. Kind of how peaches are best for us to eat in the summer here in America. Oh, so I guess it depends on what each sea animal's diet is, right, Emily? I'd be really interested to learn the differences between all the sea creatures up close and personal. What a good idea. Well, there's some incredible sea life in this tide pool, we can see even bigger variety at one of my favorite places, the aquarium. Should we take a trip? Oh boy, I love aquariums. Let's do it. Oh, there's so many kinds of fish here. Fish and other sea creatures. Marine biologists who work in aquariums get to hang out with all sorts of cool sea creatures. They watch and take care of these animals, like colorful fish, sneaky octopuses, and slow-moving sea turtles. And they learn lots of neat stuff about how these creatures live. I didn't know the marine biologists worked at aquariums, too, but it makes perfect sense. I tried lots of things. I worked um, in coral reefs. I worked with fishes. I did lots of different aspects of marine biology until I found the one that really worked for me, which was working with whales. I bet working with whales is so wonderful.
Say that five times fast. Working with whales is wonderful. 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 Whoa, those jellyfish glow in the dark. And look at the size of those stingrays. Their fins are like huge wings. Whoa, what's that? Ew, seaweed? Duh, that's not seaweed. That's a camouflage fish. Oh, Mr. Fish, you scared me. Many sea creatures blend into the space around them to hide from bigger fish. Well, it's like they have underwater superpowers. Hey, Emily, do you think the sea animals care about us? You know, like the marine biologists care about them. That's an interesting question. I think they do. Animals can be more compassionate and caring than we might think sometimes. Really? Yeah. In fact, not too long ago, a marine biologist named Non Hauser was snorkeling near her home in the Cook Islands, way out in the middle of the ocean. She'd spent 30 years swimming with humpback whales and learning about them. Just like Asha studies big blue whales but not actually swims with them. How cool. Yep, but this particular dive for Nan was different. <gasps> Why? What happened? Well, Nan was next to a huge humpback whale and it wasn't long before she noticed a big tiger shark swimming down below them. D that's scary. What'd she do? Nan was scared too, but the whale was worried about Nan and tried to help her when the shark came near. Really? What'd the whale do? It moved between Nan and the shark, and it kept trying to put Nan on its back to save her. What? Well, how did it do that? The whale used its giant fin to gently lift Nan up, and eventually it helped her get up on her boat. That is so unbelievable. So she was okay? Yep, Nan made it out of the water safely, thanks to her whale friend. Yikes! The lucky that whale was there to protect her. Exactly. And now she says the whale comes back to see her from time to time, even after traveling all over the ocean with its family. What a story. So I guess animals really do care about people. Wow. Working with sea animals would be so amazing. Some of them seem so smart. Asha, what kind of things do people need to do to become marine biologists in the first place? So to become a marine biologist, you can't, you can't just wake up one day and decide, I'm going to be a marine biologist. You have to get a certain amount of training because you have to, first of all, learn about the ocean. You have to learn about its inhabitants. You have to understand why it works the way it works. So it's a lot of study that goes on beforehand. And then you got to try to get out there and get your hands dirty. That's the really fun part, where you take all this knowledge that you've read in textbooks, that you've learned from your teachers, and then you go into the marine space and you go, how does it actually all work? So I went from doing my first degree, my undergraduate degree in marine biology, and then I went out and lived in a tent in New Zealand, uh, trying to be a volunteer and help on different marine projects so I could understand what do marine biologists actually do. Discovering the ocean's mystery seems like such an adventure, but it seems like a lot of work too, doesn't it? How'd you do it all on your own, Asha? Like going from a little girl curious about ocean life in Sri Lanka to becoming a world famous marine biologist. Today I am who I am because my parents were such incredible role models and showed me that you can do whatever you want if you set your heart on it and you work your you know you work your hardest and just keep going and just believe in yourself and keep going down that path persisting no matter what other people say but always have those great cheerleaders right around you so that you can be supported on this very very long journey. Being a marine biologist is a pretty exciting job, huh? And it sounds like having people who believe in you, like your parents and friends, is super important, especially when things get tough. I guess believing in yourself is a big part of making your dreams come true, just like in the stories where heroes never give up on their quests. You just gotta keep going. That's all the time we have for today. But thanks so much for joining us, Asha. I'm so glad Winston took initiative and invited you along. You dream of becoming a dancer, a lion trainer, celebrity chauffeur.
more songs, activities, and podcasts on our YouTube channels. That was fun!